In this lesson, we are going to learn about atomic size of an atom. Well, most importantly, we are going to look at how to use the periodic table to determine the relative size of an atom. Well, first of all, how do we determine the size of an atom? Well, the way it works is this. We look at the radius of an atom, and to determine the radius of an atom, we look at the nucleus, which is extremely dense, of the same atoms, and we measure the distance between the two nuclei. And from there, we take that number divided by 2, give us our radius. So that's how we figure out the radius or the size of an atom. Well, before we go on and look at a specific pattern, we need to understand where is the data coming from. So we actually have the data of atomic size. So let's look at the graph of atomic size. First of all, on the x-axis, we have the atomic number, that is the number proton. Then this cost changes to the radii. So how does the radii depend on the atomic number? And if we look at this carefully, we notice this is lithium. And right down here, we have neon. And this is basically our second period. This is period number two. On the periodic table, if we look at the periodic table right here, this is lithium and that's neon. That's period number two. And here you have hydrogen and helium. And that's period number one right there. And if we go back here, we have sodium and that's argon. Look at that. Isn't that period number three right there? So sodium right here and argon. And that's period number three. And what do you notice about the pattern? Within a period, if we go across, right, in terms of increased atomic number, 3, 4, 5, 6, and all the way to 10, we know that the radii decreases. So actually, within a period, if we go across, it decreases. And the same thing happened to period 3 and 4 and 5, so on. But look what happened if we go down the periodic table. Well, to do that, we have hydrogen, lithium, sodium, and potassium. Here's hydrogen. If we look at hydrogen, go to lithium, look what happened to the radii. It increased. Same thing from lithium to sodium, and all the way to potassium, it increased. And that tells us if we go down the periodic table with increasing number of the period or the energy level, it would cause an increase in the atomic size. So... That's what the data told us. Now let's look at the reason why atoms on the periodic table has the trend of going across within a period, it decreases in size. Going down the periodic table, it increases in size. Well, first of all, we need to look at this equation. ZEFF equal to Z minus shielding. So shielding, think of the shield, okay? And ZEFF is basically effective nuclear charge and nuclear charge is represented by Z. And what's nuclear charge? Well, think of nucleus. That's talking about the number of protons. Okay? And shielding effect is basically talking about what is shielding the electron from the nucleus. And this is created by the electron and electron Repulsion. And we're going to talk more about this in detail. Well, first of all, let's define what is effective nuclear charge. Well, this is the pull exerted on a specific electron by the nucleus. That means the nucleus is pulling in the electron, attracting the electron. Take into account any electron, electron repulsion. Well, remember, outside an atom, we have electron, and electron are negative, and so therefore they repel each other. But here's the most important part, is that we have something called the inner electron and outer electron. So let's go back to this picture right here. See, this electron right here, that is the outermost electron. And this electron is also known as the valence electron. But this inner electron right here, this electron play a very important role. Because why? Because look at this. Electron are negative. So what do they do? Basically, this electron creates shielding effect. 
Well, what does that mean? Shielding. Well, think of the word shield is basically to protect. It is protecting this electron from being attracted by that proton inside. So the more inner electron you have, the more shielding effect you're going to have. But you notice as you go across this right here, right, the inner electron does not change at all except for the outer electron. So it turned out that the inner electron are very good at shielding, but the electron in the same valence shell, just like we have right here, on the same valence shell, which is one, two, three, on the third shell, it doesn't have the same effect or the same strength of shielding as the inner electron. So the electron in the same valence shell do not block the nuclear attraction experienced by each other as efficiently as the inner electron. And that's the reason why as you go across, right, it's actually getting smaller because there is something else being added beside the electron. What is it? Well, we look at the periodic table, what else is being added? Three, four, five, six, the number of proton. So the nuclear charge right here would increase, right? If the shielding stays the same, the nuclear charge increase, guess what happened? Of course, the effective nuclear charge will increase. And that's the logic behind it. So that's the reason why atoms tend to decrease as we go across. Because the shielding effect stays the same, but the nuclear charge, the number of proton, increase. Now, what about the, the reason why as it go down, it will increase? Well, think about it. As it go down, look what happened. You're adding additional shell to it, right? You're adding more electron to it, not just one electron. You're adding an entire layer of this. Remember, the first one only has two. The second one has eight electrons. So to go down in the third period, you actually have three shell right here. This will have one shell, two shell, and three shell. Three complete orbit. Of course, it's going to get larger. So that's the reason why each time we move from one element to the next across a period, that means within the period, the nuclear charge, this is talking about the number of protons, okay? The number of proton increase by one, but the shielding effects only slightly increase because electrons are adding to the same valence shell. And the number of inner electrons does not change, so the shielding doesn't change at all. Now let's look at the size of ions. Well, there are two types, positive and negative. Let's look at the positive one first. Well, first of all, positive charges Tell us that we have what? We have lost electron. Now, if we lost an electron, the size is actually smaller. The size of the ion is smaller than its neutral atom. Why is that? Well, think about it. We lose that electron. Now, the nuclear charge inside will able to attract the fewer electron that's remaining. So that's the reason why it's getting smaller, because fewer electron cause a decrease in shooting, even though the lost electron are valence electron. What about the negative ions? Well, think about negative. Negative means you have gained electrons, right? If you gain electron, more electron, more repulsion, because electron and electron are negative, so they repel each other. So therefore, the negative ion will be larger than its neutral atom because more electron increase repulsion, therefore increase shielding. That means the electron will be able to escape or move away from the positive proton. So those are the reason why the atomic size on the periodic table has a trend of going across, it would decrease, but going down, it would increase in terms of size.